my channel Curious Heart. I'm Chen Si, a passionate Mongolian soul, sharing my journey in fashion, art, culture and education from Germany with love. Today I'm going to take you to an historical significant spot called Max Stern Cellar under the old university building in Würzburg. Right now I'm at my alma mater Bavarian Julius Maximilians University Würzburg to be precise at the so-called old university where the law faculty resides. I remember my very first day here for an introductory event for all the freshman students in the auditorium. On that day, my mom called me and asked if I was doing okay on my very first day at the university in a foreign country. I recall telling her that I am not sure if I'm at the right place because it looks pretty much like a church here and for my understanding back then it did not look like an usual university building. Compared to those initial days of my student life, now I am a very proud member of the Lawyers Alumni Association of the University of Würzburg and I am very happy to introduce you today on behalf of this alumni association. A place with history in significance not only at the university but also in the city and the region. Would you believe me if I told you a huge amount of wine were stored here in this vaulted cellar? Over 1 million liters of wines were stored in 500 wooden barrels here in this cellar. So I'm curious, why wine in Würzburg? Why wine under the university? So I'm asking Professor Dr. Erik Hilgendorf. Good morning, my name is Eric Hildendorf. We are now in the Max Stern Cellar of the Würzburg University. I'm a professor of criminal law at our faculty and uh, in addition I'm the chairman of the Würzburg Alumni Association. Why does our faculty have a wine cellar? Well, this university is quite old. It was founded in 1402 and at the first time it was not so very successful for lack of money. Therefore, in the 16th century, the, the Prince Bishop, who was in charge of the university, gave several vineyards to the university in order to support it financially. And this wine business was active until um, the 20th century, and then it was handed over to a Jewish wine merchant. His name was Matzstern. Max Stern was a well-respected businessman, philanthropist and wine merchant in Würzburg. After his schooling and commercial apprenticeship, he went to work for his father's wine business. He took over the company in 1912, expanding it into one of the largest wine trading businesses in the region. He was named to the Council of Commerce during the late 20s and was granted a lease to use the basement cellars of the old university. He stocked 500 wood casks with about 1 million liters of wine in over 700 meters of wine cellars, the most impressive of which was called Rezeptoratskela with 24 casks holding 2,600 liters each. The chronicle of the Stern family was engraved on the bottoms of these barrels, which can still be seen today in Würzburg's Julius Spital. Grave anti-Semitism ultimately forced Max Stern to leave his homeland and escape to America with wife Tony and daughters Ingeborg, Ursula and Margaret. Okay, some years ago I was dean of the faculty and at, at that time um, the mayor of Würzburg invited Jewish refugees to come back to the city to see what has happened and what Germany is uh, like and it was my task 
to uh, offer a kind of a guided tour through the university. And as I did so, I realized that that was something very special about our old faculty. Uh, some people told me about the Stern family and about the history. And uh, afterwards, I uh, tried to get some more information uh, with the help of historians. One of them, Helmut Fersch, was very active and helped me a lot. And then we learned about the history of our wine cellar that Max Stern had um, operated it for a lot of years and then had been forced to fly from Germany in 1938. Uh, and with that information I started the work in the cellar. Well, at the end of my deanship the faculty decided to rename the cellar to Max Stern cellar. And now it's used as part of our cafeteria, but in addition it's used as a place where talks are taking place and um, uh, discussions and a lot of events. For example, we had um, a discussion group here on Yehuda Amikai. Yehuda Amikai, a famous Israel poet and novelist, wrote a book on someone returning after the war to Würzburg, visiting again the old places and this novel was analyzed and discussed here in the cellar. Just one, one example of what we are doing here. Then we had the spokesman of the Jewish Council of Germany, Mr. Josef Schuster, who gave a lecture in this room. And um, let's say once a month, two times a month, some discussion will take place here. During the Nazi area, a lot of Jewish students and um, young scholars lost the doctor title. And when we learned about that, uh, we decided uh, to give them the doctor title back in 2010. There was a big celebration. Uh, we could even invite uh, some uh, of them and we gave the doctor title officially back to them. Of course, for many of them it was too late. but. At least in principle, we try to restore their dignity. By the way, the most famous of these um, doctors from Würzburg was a very famous legal sociologist, Theodor Geiger. When I worked on the history and renovation of the Max Stern cellar, I realized that there had been some beautiful glass windows. Of course, Max Stern had to leave these glass windows behind when he fled to the United States. But with the help of Helmut Fersch, I learned that these windows were still existing and we were even able to find the place where they were stored. After World War II, these windows at first remained in the cellar. But then they were built in a private house and in the 70s this private house was destroyed and uh, the windows were taken out. And uh, they were taken to a craftsman and he stored them in a cell. And um, I learned about this history and we uh, looked for these windows and the, the son who was a boy when these windows were taken out of this private house, this son phoned me and told me I have the windows. But it was not easy to get hold of these windows because this man was so terribly busy and in the end it was my wife who convinced him to hand them over to me. She simply went to his place very early in the morning and told him I would be very glad if you could give us these windows. It was quite expensive to fix the windows on the walls but with the help of the Schulze Fielitz Foundation in Berlin uh, we were able to get a small sum and then together with the alumni money it was able to fix these windows on the wall and here they are now. They are protected by special glass so there can be no um, uh, sabotage and no vandalism uh, but on the whole our students really like the windows so I'm not afraid that they could be uh, harmed.
Max Stern offered also wine tastings in these uh, cellars, and for this reason he had uh, some special glass windows made. Um, they were not windows to the outside, but windows uh, that were inside the cellar. They were illuminated, and they are, the idea was to give a special uh, atmosphere to these people drinking wine and feeling happy and so on. And uh, the names of the uh, windows are the good husband and the bad husband, the gute Ehemann and the schlechte Ehemann. Let us begin with the bad husband. Here you see the bad husband. The bad husband is chasing women. Yeah? He's getting drunk and then he, well, let's say, attacks a young girl. He definitely drinks too much. Look at his face. Yeah, he is mad with alcohol. He plays cards with his friends, gets quite aggressive, and in the evening at 3 o'clock in the night, the uh, innkeeper has to tell him to leave. He's totally drunken when he comes home. He holds the key in the wrong way. He cannot enter his house, and his wife is alone, and she's crying. It's a very sad story. These windows were made nearly 100 years ago, and they still are quite impressive and quite beautiful. Our students simply love them. I think the boys have a certain tendency towards this um, glass window, the bad husband. And now let's go to the good husband. The good husband holding the room for his wife. And he's very uh, upright and she has a keys. In the German uh, law, the, the power of the keys means you are in charge of everything. Yeah? So she's in charge. Nevertheless, the words show there's harmony in between these two. The good husband also does some drinking and playing with his friends, but very early he goes home to his wife and there he finds not only his lady, but a lot of children, there are 12 children. And if you look carefully at this picture, you see it's a boy, a girl, a boy, a girl, and so on. So there was already gender equality uh, at that time. And new, peop new children are coming, and over there, this animal, this, this bird, is a symbol for fertility, so we can expect that more children are to come soon. I think it's a wonderful um, picture. I like it very much. It's still modern. It shows a lot of sympathy for normal human uh, people. It's still quite uh, modern and uh, it's certainly one of the highlights of our uh, university now. several times and he's a good friend of mine and somehow we had the idea to um, uh, make an exhibition of the works of his son in this cellar and we, in total we had 12 pictures some of them could be sold some of them were given away and this one was bought by the alumni association we left it here it shows Germany it shows the ideas of Jonathan Dantinger uh, in Germany and you see it's a, 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 a difficult uh, picture, it's German houses and but the color is quite strange and here this red uh, symbolizes probably uh, a fire so it, it, there's a lot of problematic background to this uh, picture and uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, I left it here and uh, sometimes we can come here with students and discuss the German history.
thank you for watching this video thank you for being curious with me if you love this video and discovered something new don't forget to give thumbs up and if you have any questions concerning the max stern seller just leave a comment below in the comment section and i will see you in my next video bye bye